Greetings. About two years ago, Mike Van Duzee sent this picture of three hydroponic towers and asked if I could make something like this. These towers are ingenious. They allow an efficient use of space. Buckets are just stacked upon each other, so no structure is needed. They are low cost, and no electric power or pumps are needed. So yes, Mike, I'll give it a shot. I have been growing short-term leafy crops in these three and a half gallon food grade plastic buckets which were purchased from a bakery some years ago. Five gallon buckets would be preferred for this project, but this is what I have. Here is an example of three arugula plants growing in a similar bucket. No additional nutrient solution was needed to reach this growth stage. Based upon this, I am inclined to only grow three plants per bucket in the tower. These buckets are about ten and a half inches deep. Plants will be grown in these short forestry tubes which have additional holes drilled in them. When a tube is inserted through the side of the bucket, the tube would not contact the nutrient solution. This is just not satisfactory. We want the tube pointed downward so the bottom will be immersed in nutrient solution at transplanting time. A slotted hole in the bucket will make this possible. The slotted hole should be placed as high as possible in the bucket. A pilot hole is drilled about one and three quarters inches from the top of the bucket. In a horizontal direction, the hole placement should be about one and three quarters inch from the handle attachment. A hole saw is used to cut only about half of the depth of the bucket wall. It should look something like this. Another pilot hole is drilled about one eighth to one quarter inch below the outer circle of the first hole. Then the hole saw is used to completely cut out the second hole after which the first hole is cut out. The slotted holes look like an outline of an eight. Three holes are placed in each bucket, one in the center and two of which are about one and three quarters inch from the 180 degrees apart handle attachments. Now this is slick. After making the slotted holes for the forestry tubes, the ten and a half inch deep buckets now only hold seven and a half inches of nutrient solution. The buckets were filled about halfway with water. Then the three part master blend hydroponic fertilizer was added. On the bottom bucket water was added up to the level of the bottom of the elongated holes. This is a depth of about 7.5 inches which is 10.9 liters or 2.88 gallons of nutrient solution. A cover was placed on the bottom bucket then the next bucket was stacked and filled with water and the same was done for the last bucket and a tower was born. The electrical conductivity of the nutrient solution was 1.38 ms which was a little bit low but it should be okay. The forestry tubes are filled with growing medium and are lightly tapped to eliminate any voids in the medium. Forestry tubes were placed in a pot under a happy leaf grow light until the seedlings were as large as the tube diameter and then the tubes were transplanted into the tower. On June 22nd, basil was transplanted into the bottom bucket, leafy lettuce was transplanted into the middle bucket, and pak choy was transplanted into the top bucket. The lid of the top bucket had holes in it so a piece of aluminized expanded polystyrene was used to cover the cover. It occurred to me that we probably wouldn't get much rain in the next month, so another bucket was added to the tower with arugula growing in net pots placed in the lid of the bucket. Rainfall shouldn't affect tower plants very much, but it can greatly affect hydroponic crops growing in bucket lids, so if heavy rains are forecast, then I would plan to move the tower under the roof overhang of the house. It's July 1 and the plants are growing. Fast forward to July 13th, and there has been significant growth except for the basil plants. Two days later and the plants are growing okay but some of the heads are hanging down because there is no support for them. A day later and oh what happened here? All the heads are hanging down and one pak choy plant even fell out of the bucket. The increasing weight of the growing plants has pushed the forestry tubes downward and that's not good. I reoriented the tubes but the heads are still hanging down. This has to be corrected and quickly. So I got to thinking, how would Mike Van Der Zee approach this problem? Well the answer probably would have something to do with pool noodles. So I bought a couple of pool noodles. They were pretty long 
So I cut one in half and looked at it and searched for ideas. Sadly to say, nothing developed. And all I could think of was, duh. Discouraged, I discarded the noodle, but then noticed there were two little mouths looking up at me. Maybe a string could be passed through the noodle. Let's see where that takes us. The string was tied, causing the noodle to become the shape of a D. Ah, the D-shaped pool noodle fits nicely around the bucket. Da was the answer. The pool noodle was tied to the bucket and a PVC pipe acted as a spacer and tightened up the pool noodle. The spacer pushed the noodle away from the bucket so it becomes a shelf which can provide support for the heads. In a refinement of this concept, forestry tube spacers can be placed near the outer two holes and then the PVC pipe is no longer needed. Here is a close-up of the forestry tube spacer concept. Please suggest other materials which could be used as spacers. Just for fun, pliers were placed on the noodle shelf to demonstrate that it will be sturdy enough to hold the heads. Then, I very carefully placed two pool noodle shelves to support the lettuce and pak choy. You could almost hear the plants saying, Ah, now I can rest my weary head. Two days later, and the lettuce and pak choy are clearly enjoying their newfound support. Here's a close-up of two pak choy plants resting on the shelf. Now, this is a nice picture of a tower garden. Yes, arugula, pak choy, and lettuce can get ahead in a tower garden, but basil at the bottom is a slow stalker. The pak choy heads are merely ready to be harvested. Here are the pak choy heads before harvest, and here's what the tower looks like after harvest. After harvesting the three pak choy plants, which weighed a little more than three quarters of a pound, of course, I had to open up the bucket and look at the roots. The forestry tubes were pointed downward. Roots from the three plants joined hands and reached to the bottom of the bucket where the roots spread out and at least some roots were more or less floating on the remaining nutrient solution. No water or fertilizer was added after transplanting and there was about one and a half inches of nutrient solution remaining. The water consumption rate was slightly less than three gallons per pound of pak choy, which is slightly lower than 25 milliliters per gram of foliage, and this is very efficient. The remaining nutrient solution had an EC of 0.82 ms, and that indicates that the initial fertilizer rate should be adjusted upwards a little for the next crop. The pH was very alkaline, and this will cause a lower growth rate, but I don't know at which growth stage this started, because the pH was okay at transplanting time. More pH down will be added to the next crop. The pak choy bucket was removed from the tower, so now the tower is lower. The lettuce bucket still had a little bit of nutrient solution left, so I decided to let it grow a few days longer. The lettuce was harvested over the next four days and yielded just under a total of three quarter pounds. Looking inside the bucket, I've seen better roots before, but they were good enough for these lettuce plants. This is a nice view of the roots on and in the nutrient solution. Again, no nutrient solution was added since transplanting and only three quarters of an inch remained in the bucket at harvest time. This is all of the remaining solution that was left at harvest time. Nutrient solution consumption was calculated to be around 29 milliliters of solution for every gram of lettuce or three and a half gallons of water per pound of lettuce. That's a pretty efficient use of water. If three plants can be grown in this three and a half gallon bucket without refilling, it is likely that a five gallon bucket would support four heads without refilling. The EC of the remaining nutrient solution was 1.92 ms. This indicates that the fertilizer rate was about adequate. The pH is running alkaline, but not as bad as in the pak choy bucket. I will add another milliliter of pH down to the bucket in the next crop, and hopefully this should improve matters. Some of these corrections have been made for the next crop, and so far, so good. Well, Mike, this is my approach to the Van Der Zee tower concept. My version of a four-story tower is able to grow 12 plants in the space of three plants growing in a single hydroponic bucket. All I need to do is fill the buckets with nutrient solution, transplant, and harvest with no filling or dealing with pumps during the growing period. The Van Der Zee tower will be part of my garden in the future. Thanks, Mike, for a great concept.